we are not sports center. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Debate Amongst Friends. I am the Professor John Gotti. My co-host over here is Doc Leesner, the podcasting beast, and we're ready to provide you with another fun edition of sports news, analysis, and the read. Welcome to Debate Amongst Friends, ladies and gentlemen, coming here live. I am Dr. Wednesday Night, the podcast beast, right here from my new home in Durham. He just needs to put it all the way out there, folks. Because <laughs> you know, I, I want people to see it, man. This is a really, really beautiful place, and uh, I want people to see it. But I mean, Doc, I, you, you got millions and millions of fans out there. I mean, I just want to make sure, you know, you don't have all those fangirls just trying to hound you and try to rob you, Doc. I just hope it's not like, you know, a low down dirty shame where it's like, shame, shame. You don't love me like you do. Get off me, lady. I ain't late screaming my name. Shame, shame, shame. Leave me alone. Stop talking about the silk draws. Don't love me like you do. Exactly. <laughs> Right now to talk about football week 10 action where we had some really, really key matchups, divisional matchups, some really, really huge games, some great finishes, a lot of good finishes. A lot of good finishes. Uh, nothing better than the play of the year candidate. Of course. Where everybody and their mother is losing their minds. Especially in Buffalo, were eating their buffalo wings. And uh, no, they all kind of uh, decided to do swan tom bombs on the tables. And you know what? This is exactly why Gotti 1 1 exists. It's plays like this. Mm-hmm. If you don't know, obviously you need to go on YouTube or any other platform that you can see the game. Um, but Kyler Murray, who looks huge in some of these pictures that they show, I don't know how they do it, but they make him look really, really big. Yes. Throws up a Hail Mary with less than 25 seconds to go. And the player that they traded for a second round pick. And David Johnson. And David Johnson. That's right. I'm talking about not DeAndre Washington from the EFL. Uh, I see what you did there. DeAndre Hopkins, who showed them how it is to get, quote, unquote, dunked on. That's the new thing they're saying on the media. Uh, got- no, no, this is I, this is being must. Stop it. That's this what is I said. Must. I was like, why, why are they making things so difficult? Because they're idiots. Difficult? See, you're about to make me going around about the media right now. Uh, you about to and then I saw pictures. I saw pictures of uh <laughs> jump man advertisements. Okay, so <laughs> that one was hilarious. I will yeah, say that. that. I'm like, that cool. is that's actually their the their next uh commercial right there. It's perfect, it's yeah. gold. All you have to do is slow it down. Yeah, all you gotta do is slow it down instead of it being with colors, turn it black and white, and then you have someone mm-hmm. say saying some uh inspirational stuff in the background. I mean, doc, I mean that's that's billions right there. I think you just throw Randy Moss in the background and call it a day. Actually, just have Randy Moss do the commentary. Exactly. Uh, I think. Uh, and and Jumpman, if y'all decide to do that and we find out, we better get our check. Hey, you already you know. So obviously, I was excited as I had Kyler Murray yet again mm-hmm. in fantasy football this week, in which, I mean, it was subpar. He threw one touchdown. I think he ran. Three in? Yep. Two in? Uh, was he, ran, he ran two in. Yep. And, of course, the last one being the Hail Mary to DeAndre Hopkins, in which he says, uh, I knew that he was going to catch it. I think one meme says, Hop, can hop down there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but three guys, though. Three guys, bro. And that's being lost. And my brother said, well, why didn't nobody, nobody knock it down? He was like, why is there so many people 15 to 20 yards from the line of scrimmage where we need – everybody should be back. I mean, 
you know, this is a situation like the Patriots game where Rob Gronkowski's chasing somebody around trying to catch. I think it was the Dolphins. Yeah, it was the Dolphins. It was the miracle. Yeah. It was the miracle in yeah. uh, Miami. They're not doing that. They're not doing this. This ball was heaved. And yeah, it was a dart. Like you want to talk about a Dilfer dime? Dart. This is a dart. This is a like, dart coupled with the jump ball. Oh my god! It was so perfect. Like, like if, like if you're offensive coordinator and you want the perfect scenario to end the game, that's what this game was. That yeah. that's what this play was. But for no, people absolutely. who want to sit there and talk about, you know, DeAndre Hopkins, you know, dunk on people, and you know, and it's funny because I was um, watching the Pat McAfee show yesterday. Shout outs to him yeah. too for the brand. Uh, would really love to see uh, Doc get on that show, by the way. But, yeah, that would be awesome. But he was getting on, you know, the commentary and um, how people just covered the NFL and, you know, how it has regressed so much to – it's kind of like a wrestling. Like, like people are just saying – talking stories and not really talking about what's happening or, like, adding more insight to what's happening. And that's kind of what we're getting with the aftermath of the play, as people like to call it as well, too. Um, like they're just talking about all this other stupid stuff and not really talking about, as you were just mentioning, uh, what the defense was doing and what what things they probably could have done better, and you know how the heck you allow Kyler Murray to roll out to his left like that and just just chuck it up there, just chuck right. it up there, right. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure what people are looking at or what people are thinking. Like I told you today. Um, or like I always tell you off the podcast, I very rarely watch news outlets because I feel like it's always like high speculation. Uh, and then a little bit, I wouldn't even say a little bit, I would say high speculation and then high favoritism, high exaggeration, bias, high exaggeration. It's yep. like, it's oh my all goodness, that. it's so ridiculous. Um, Which but, is why I like to watch like the Pat McAfee show because he doesn't care about doing stuff like that. He'll just no, say what he wants to say. Absolutely. And we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, and this is not to take anything away from the Buffalo Bills. We're not going to put them on the no. later mentioned panic meter. And I want people to hold on to that panic meter because we're going to – we got something for that – after this game right here between two rookies, Tua Tungabaloa and Justin Herbert. Wait, wait, we're going to stop real quickly. Doc finally said the name name right. right. He finally finally. said it was two years. (laughs) Tua (laughs) Tungabaloa. Yeah, I watched his documentary. I I feel like me and Tua are like, you know. In sync now? Like I was in Hawaii eating the same food that he was eating. Um, I watched his documentary on YouTube a couple of weeks ago. I love and, it. Um, really humble guy. Yeah. I'm not really not surprised at his success. I'm surprised at how well the decision from Brian Flores to sit its magic at that particular time. And although he's not, you know, dominating the stats. Nope. They're winning football games. Yes. And people are saying, well, now they're three and no and blah 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 blah. And right. and you know, you 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 was mentioning during his first start and I said, well he did enough to win, but he didn't mm-hmm. do anything to wow. He didn't. Like they not have like a, Justin Herbert, not like nope. you know the other rookies. Yep. And we talked about the rookie of the year candidates last week. Mm-hmm. And um, the one thing I didn't get a chance to mention on the offensive side, I know I gave it to Joe Burrow, and uh, you gave it to Justin Herbert. But I really wish that they would expand it to offensive linemen. I but can I, I can understand that too. I think Tristan Wirfs has been like the best offensive rookie of the year. I really do. And that's just not because he played for Tampa. I mean, this guy is really, really, has been a really, really good tackle. Unfortunately, 
unfortunately, those awards goes to more the skilled players, unfortunately. Right. That's what I'm saying. I wish that they would expand it because he really has been, I would say, the offensive rookie of the year. Absolutely. I just wish that they would expand it. But this game, 29-21, uh, came down to the fourth quarter. Obviously, Justin Herbert, 20 for 32, 187 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Tua, 15 for 25, 169, two touchdowns. Um, he he has not been running the football as much as I thought he would be. No, no. And, and I think it's more of to just pre- – like, once again, he still has – he has players that – you know, and this is why you have such an issue, and I have such an issue with the media, the way that they cover teams. Like, they're only focused on Tua. Their defense is playing amazing. Their defense is causing turnovers, and it's causing havoc for the opposite offense. And then offense, I mean, they're really just keeping it simple. Like, mm-hmm. we're doing short routes here. We're not, you know, trying to turn Tua into the next Patrick Mahomes. Like, Right. They, they have a winning formula. Why permeate outside of that wheelhouse? No, without question. He's spreading the ball around. I mean, you know, no receivers are are dominating, but nope. I think that's okay because it seems like they're running the football with great success. Um, they have a young man named Salvin Ahmed. Yeah, it's, it's moderate success. I wouldn't say it's great success, but once again, they're still moving the chains, which is... I mean, 21 carry for 85 yards, one touchdown. I mean, for a guy that you know, I never heard of. Mm-hmm. And obviously it's going to be on the week 11 fantasy wire. I'm sure in my league, he's already been picked up, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't have time to be picking or dropping anybody at this time. So, uh, I no, think, we're, we're, uh, we're definitely getting Chargers, into those dog days of uh fantasy right there, Boyle. Yeah. The Chargers, on the other hand, I mean, they just can't win the close ones. No. And um, I, I, I'm sticking to what I said last week. I really think, that this could get the coach fired. It's possible. Um, it's funny that you mentioned that. The Chargers are only one of three teams this year that hasn't lost the game beyond six points. That was the Bucks last year. That's why I know that they're they're in position to take a leap. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they they're starting running back early in the year against the Bucks. And yep. They haven't really been. Since that injury, they've been struggling. Yes. Like that exact injury. Like we came back and won that game and then the games thereafter. So they just haven't found the winning formula to win those close games. I agree. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to put Anthony Lynn on the bubble or not. I think he'll end up being on the bubble. I think he it's will. Tough. I don't want him to be because that's. I think I he's still think. doing a great job. But yeah. I mean, now you have I mean, a rookie, and you know who's playing right. lights out the way that he is, and you know ownership they get greedy. And people might give him a pass, you know, due to COVID. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, obviously we talked about the hot seat earlier in the year, and you know we had Gaze, we had Patricia on there. No, no, Gaze is the he, list. Yeah, since we actually started that list, only person that's remained consistently on the hot seat that we're like, what the heck is going on, is freaking Adam Gase. So um, I don't know. I think that it's time to um, reevaluate some things. Obviously, the Lions are playing much better. Stafford's finally healthy. Mm -hmm. I hope he can remain healthy. There's actually hope in Detroit for them to make the playoffs. I'm not sure how great that is, but uh, uh, DeAndre Swift, I think his name is DeAndre Swift. Yeah, DeAndre Swift, had a, he had himself a game. Yeah, he did, and hopefully he can continue. Um, but where there is panic for the coaches, there is also panic for some of these teams that are now on the bubble of the playoffs. And so, sir... I'm going to insert here a panic button. All right. I see that panic button. It's nice, shiny. It's red. It says the word panic on it. All right. Let's do this. We just hit this panic button. And one team that I'm going to start with that although they have not been losing games, 
Um, the one team now is the New Orleans Saints, who have now lost Drew Brees again for a couple of weeks. Could couple be the rest of, of the season. He's saying that he'll be back in no time. But it's going to be like two, three weeks, probably four. Well, they're saying a punctured lung. I mean, Tyrod hasn't come back from a punctured lung. <laughs> well, Tyrod's not going to come back being a starter, though. Dang right, he's not. But Tyrod had a chance. I think it was, what, three to four weeks, I believe. After three to four weeks, he was at least healthy enough to possibly get back into the lineup. And well, maybe they, should have went back to Tyrod. they probably should have went back to Tyrod after – giving up those four close games. I don't know about I mean, that. But I'm not going to hit the panic beater on the Saints yet. Um, even with Jameis starting? Even with Jameis starting. Ooh. I'm not going to hit. Place. Not yet. John Kelly says Jameis is taking it to the Super Bowl. No, I didn't say that. Don't even. <laughs> don't even dare put words in my mouth, sir. Okay. <laughs> don't you don't you Kendrick Perkins me, okay? <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, man, that guy don't sound just like Jay Ritty, boy, I tell you. That's hilarious. But no, I'm not going to hit the panic beater on the Saints. I still think that their offense is still really, really good. I think now with Jameis on on the helm, you know, they're going to be throwing things much more deeper down the field. And who knows? Who knows what may happen? I don't know. But the Saints, Sean, but Sean Payton always finds a way to make it work. I think Jameis is going to be on a 10 to 15 yard maximum throw window. I don't think they're they're pushing him down the field. Like, listen, Jameis, I want you to keep this nice and simple. We're going to do some screens. You got one of the best running backs in history. He does. Right he does. Now. Yep. Like, like football. We're gonna we're gonna run him. I'm going to keep pulling you out of the game with probably at a higher rate than I pulled Drew. And we're gonna we're gonna run this football. You don't have to worry about turning the ball over thirty times because you're not even gonna get 30, 30 throws within this rest, whatever amount of games you're gonna play. I think we have to wait and see for his first start. Nah, he not. They they only had him throw the ball what ten to thirteen times this game, and I think he completed six passes. It, it was six uh, out ten of times. It was uh, six out of ten. It was six. Yeah, it's like, yeah. They, they're gonna keep them reins, and I don't mean Roman. That's what really you're tight. I saw what you did there, but let's go to another team yeah. about this panic button. Yeah, because I have a feeling that was more of a troll move, but I'm going to leave it that was. one alone. Let's go to the official list here. So first team up, we're going to go with the Chicago Bears. Um, I'm hitting that button right there. Ooh, hitting the button there. It's, it's kind of a rough one. Um, Chicago started really hot. Yep. Um, you know, obviously they were six and or five and three, six and three. Um, they they come off it was five and three. They they come off a big win against the Bucks and they've yep. lost these last two, but they just haven't seemed to be they lost their last four games. Yes, yeah, nothing special about the Bears right now. No, uh, they're not doing anything special. No, nope. and it doesn't help out that they lost uh, Nick Foles and they have Tyler Bray starting now. Um, That's interesting. I mean, where's Mitchell? I don't, I don't know where he is. That is so crazy. Yeah, so that's why I'm hitting so that panic beater right there, Boyle. Um, but but the, but the off has been in disarray all all season. I mean, it's been in disarray since last season, um, and. This isn't the type of league anymore where defense is going to lead you to a championship, unfortunately. Right. Uh, let's go to the next team here, the Baltimore Ravens. I'm holding out. I'm holding out, hold for, out for one more week. Because, so, because each of their losses have been against really, really good teams. I don't know this last week. Until yeah. Sunday. So, but I think that's more of the Ravens being Belichick. It was also a rainy game. It was a pretty exactly. rainy game. It was. It was just. It was like that's that's what I said. Being Belichick, you know, and Even there's though, of course the mythos of uh, Bill Belichick being able to predict the future and how he's able to change the weather out there in, in Foxborough. Like that's what I'm saying. 
I'm not going to hit the button yet, but they haven't looked that good on offense the past couple of weeks, though. I would say that this is starting to have them look like a team that would be in that tier where it was only good when they're playing a bad team. Yep. They're they're starting to fall into that realm, but playing the playing and losing to the Patriots is is no bueno. No, it's no bueno at all. I can understand. Uh, the next, so wait, year, so you said as you're hitting that panic button on them? I'm not going to hit the panic. I'll give them one more week. Okay, I think they're going to bounce. Okay, I'm going to do one more okay. week as well. Um, the next team is the Tennessee Titans, the Dukes Titans. You know, not only the Dukes Titans, but I know my friend Mike was really, really undefeated train. And he used to say, if your team's not undefeated, you shouldn't even be talking to me. And I'm going to say that I haven't seen that post in a couple of weeks. You said, uh, what's his name, Mike? Mike, Mike. Hey, hey, Mike, Professor John Gotti, how you doing, buddy? Uh, so here's the problem. Your team has lost three of the last four games. Um, yeah, exactly. And even though you have, as Doc liked to say. Oh, Henry. Oh, Henry. Uh, your offense hasn't yeah, looked good and your defense has been giving up so many yards. Yeah. Compared to the first couple of weeks, which is why Doc and I both said at the beginning of the season, that beginning of the season, first four weeks, we said, was preseason. So pretty much week five onwards is the real season. So uh, Doc and I are both Peacock alumni, but you shouldn't be strutting around like a Peacock. That's right. I'm sorry, right. Mike. I'm sorry, Duke. But I'm hitting that panic meter. I'm hitting that panic meter. Yeah, right the best defense against the Titans is a really, really good offense. Yep. <laughs> so if your offense is clicking and you're destroying the Titans, that removes Derrick Henry from the game yep. and puts all, all the rest of the game on the quarterback. And although he's – Okay, he had some really, really great, great weeks where yes, he was looking like an MVP candidate. Which is funny because now the Colts has overtaken them in the AFC South, a it's Colts team that no one was talking about. Nobody, <laughs> nobody was talking about them at all. That boil. Um, so it's interesting to see how that really went down. Um, it's a lot. That's similar to our next team, which, of course, we both hit with the penny meter on the Titans. Yeah, we both did. Yes. The Seattle Seahawks, who fall into third in the NFC West, which is a tough division. It is a tough division. The the Rams, obviously the 49ers are going through an injury play year. Um, But the Seahawks have... Lost two in a row, which I don't know if I've seen that in a couple of years. Um, but a lot of teams are making Russell Wilson. There you go. Look very, very normal instead of extraordinary. So here is the thing. I'm hitting, I'm hitting the button, but I'm explaining why. I'm hitting the button because that defense is abysmal. Uh-oh. It is so bad that mm. all the good that Russell Wilson there you go. provides for that team gets negated. Now, granted, their losses weren't except for that um, the Bills game, because that Bills game was mm. really bad. It was against divisional opponents. It was against tough division opponents. And we both said at the start of the season, NFC West is going to be really, really good. Can I give you a stat that probably doesn't matter to a lot of people, but for the sake of the argument of the panic meter, thank you. Just to throw this out here the Seahawks have only given up two less points than the New York Jets. Jets. Yep. 
266 points. The Jets have given it 268, obviously, for those who aren't math whizzes. Um, but <sighs> yikes. I have to hit the button I mean, because of that. that I mean, great, 200, listen, they've scored a lot. I mean, 290 points. I mean, obviously, you're up there, you know, with the likes of the Bucks, the Packers. Um, you're up there, you know, with the Chiefs. Like, so they're scoring points. You know, obviously, they're probably the number one scoring point wise. They're up there. But that defense, and we always talk about defense winning championships. No, this defense is, defense is just doing the El Matador Ole. And you, on can't, the you, just can't, you just can't do that. That's that's not how you win a championship at all. Like you, you have to so that's what I'll do. I will hold off on that panic button, similar with the Titans for no, I mean, excuse me, similar with the Ravens uh-huh. for one more game because they really could have beat the Cardinals had the kicker made the field goal. Or no, I think Russell did he throw a pick? Something stupid happened in that it game. It was something stupid that happened, yeah. It was a penalty, I think. Yeah, it was something really stupid when the Seahawks played the Cardinals and it forced them to lose the game. I'm going to give them one more. I'm going to give them a Chet Stedman. Give me one more. I'm going to give them a Chet Stedman. That's one more. That's fair. Uh, I'm going to hit it. Like I said, my argument is that defense is not doing them any favors. Now, here's the problem with that, too. There was another team that was scoring a lot of points, but their defense absolutely stunk. I mean, granted, in hindsight, now they're the absolute drizzling crap in the NFC least. Yikes. But you know which team I'm talking about? Oh, no, I have have no idea. It is a better version of that team. And we're going to keep on going. Oh, he's not going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen. No. He's going to leave it up to your imagination. Yes. Wow. Yeah, because Doc oh. wants it. He needs it. But I'm going to leave him wanting. <laughs> That's, perfect. That's perfect. I'm actually sal- salivating over that. <laughs> we're going to take a quick break and come back with some more debate amongst friends after this. We are back, Doc here, jumping on the hardwood here. Ooh. NBA Ooh. news speculation. Uh, Helen Helen just came out of the office uh, with that line, sir. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Helen. oh, Helen. <laughs> she she's actually walking quickly straight towards our studio right now. You I guess tell. I should just. I guess I should put that together. Hardwood. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're jumping on to the NBA floor. Okay. Helen went back into her office. Everything's good now. <laughs> Where free agency has started. The NBA offseason has started. We got a lot of speculation. We got a lot of ice cream, unlimited sprinkles. I mean, it is unbelievable here. A lot circled around. Houston, LA, Phoenix of all Brooklyn. places. Uh, Brooklyn. Um, I mean, Milwaukee. Of things, you know, uh, Miami. Miami, yeah. You know, obviously the big deals, you know, coming from uh, the Phoenix Suns, obviously acquiring Chris Paul, uh, Mr. State Farm himself. Yeah, one of us said that, like, Two days before it actually happened, too, which is hilarious. No, definitely not. No. It, was, it was, like I said, it's a good move. I it was, mean, it was uh, actually a really, really good move. It allows Devin Booker to play his natural position, which is the exactly. two. Exactly. And exactly. are they championship contenders? Absolutely not. But they will definitely cause a lot of problems in the league. I won't say they're like Dame. And CJ out there in uh, Portland, but that's a really, really dangerous one-two combo right there in Phoenix. So you know what this is. You know what this is, though. In, in reality, this is a new Clippers team. Yeah, 
know, this is just what it is. It's a yeah, Clippers they got DeAndre team. Aiden too. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And Devin Booker. I mean, Devin Booker is better than some of the other players. Obviously, he played with what JJ Redick and a couple other really yep. really good shooters. Um, but this is an upgraded Clippers team. I can I can on. see that. Yeah, and we'll see what else they do. I mean, obviously, they give up Kelly Oubre, Ricky Rubio, Ty Jerome, um, Jalen Leck, and a 2022 first-round pick, which isn't really anything, you know. Nope. I mean, obviously, the Thunder <clears throat> are in rebuild, rebuild mode. I was going to say rebuild mode, but they're not bold at all, so they're rebuild. I saw what you did there. Uh, and, um, I mean, they got a whole bunch of picks, so hopefully they can turn it around. Who knows? Maybe the Thunder trades for James Harden. I mean, who knows? Everybody else is. That's pretty funny. Highly I saw what you did there. I saw what you did. Uh, highly doubtful. Um, uh, but highly doubtful. this move made the most sense. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, like I said, it's going to be – it's going to be – I mean, you hear me say it again. It's going to be something excellent and fun to watch for the NBA season right there. Without question. And something else that's going to be fun, and this is where I heard Kendrick Perkins for the first time. He was talking about the Milwaukee Bucks trading for Drew Holiday and Bogdan Bogdanovich. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because he's saying that this is the best starting five in the NBA. The Bucks are winning, and they are winning big right now. Getting Drew Holiday was a must for them, and it should have been a breath of fresh air for Giannis. Drew Holiday is one of the most underrated players in today's game, one of the best two-way players in today's game. And by the way, he's a closer. Now Chris Middleton could go to that third option, which he is, and let Drew Holiday be that second guy, that Robin. And then you get Bogdanovich from, from, from Sacramento. Listen. This kid is a bucket. So right now I'm looking at this Milwaukee Bucks team, and they are winning. And they have the best starting five in the NBA right now. Yeah. And, you know, Paul Pierce is like, how can you say that when you have – of course, he went with the LeBron and Anthony Davis route. But there are some really, really good starting fives. I mean, we haven't even seen these guys play basketball yet. Maybe – 2K wise, this is the best starting five if that's the, the route that he was going. But what Paul Pierce said made sense. Drew Holiday only has two years of playoff experience. Uh, Bogdanovich has never been to the playoffs. So, how is that going to help a Milwaukee team who's been struggling to advance in the playoffs? Their issue was shooting. Right, which they're going to get. I think <clears throat> Drew Holiday, which I don't know why people. Sleep on right. Drew Holiday because no, 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 he gets no, 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 no. absolutely disrespected. I, I feel like Eric Bledsoe gets disrespected, and the reason why I say that is because yes, Drew Holiday is is really really good, uh, but I don't think Eric Bledsoe was the problem. I just think the whole team because they lost to the Magic, so it was the whole team. Um, but Eric Bledsoe, George Hill, and three first-round picks go to the Pelicans. Um, so we'll see how that turns out for the Pelicans. Yeah. Um, obviously, as I mentioned um, via text, I mean, that could be another place. Hey, send me all those picks. <laughs> and take James Harden for a gazillion dollars. I think having Drew Holiday being the person who can dominate uh, ball, uh, ball domineering duties mm -hmm. for that team is going to help out a lot. Um, I felt like they became pretty much one dimensional with Giannis just bringing up the ball and kind of right. just get out of his way. And if he get double, well, you better shoot the ball, kind of thing. Um, I think this will bring them back towards a more normally paced basketball rhythm. Um, and Boban uh, Bodanovich um, is really, really good. Really, really Not good. Not Boban. I said Bogdan. I know what I said. Are you saying Bogdan? No, Bogdan. Bogdan. Bogdanovich. That's what I said. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bogdan Bogdanovich. <laughs> 
It's too close to. It sounds like you were saying Boban. No, not Boban. No, not Boban. No, yeah, not Boban. It's too close. It's too close. You got to say Bogdan. Bogdan. Yeah. Bogdanovich. Too close. Okay. Way too close. Uh, but played really, really well with. He, he's a great shooter. He's a very underrated defender as well, too. Like I said, I think this is a good step in the right direction. Um, of course, uh, the front office for the Bucks didn't want to lose Giannis, which it should have been paramount out of all things, because, of course, once they lost, heck, even before they went into the playoffs, people started talking about Giannis going to the Warriors, Giannis going to the Lakers, Giannis going to the Clippers, Giannis going to mm-hmm. all these different places. Mm-hmm. And they were still in the playoffs. It's just facts. It's just facts. Uh, and after yeah, losing the first game to the Magic, as Doc was mentioning, like the rumors just went wild. It was it was rumor mania. Yeah, because I was pretty sure based on the rumors. I mean, he was going to Miami. Yes. He, uh, he, you know, he's going to um, Golden State. I mean, it was it was ridiculous. No, so they're making a move to try to win now. I like it. I I feel like they have one more move left. I agree. And they but, actually wanted the, the next person that I was going to go over. Uh, they they wanted uh, Robert Covington, mm-hmm. um, who I don't blame the Blazers for kind of jumping in there and, you know, deciding like, hey, you know, Robert Covington's on the block, I mean, I, which I think every Houston Rockets on everyone's on the on the, on the, ro- on the Rockets. Yeah, it's pretty much a liquidation happening right now. Yeah, it's like, hey. Everybody can go. We're starting from scratch. It was what it sounds like. Uh, but Robert Covenant is sent to a really, really good Blazers team in exchange for Trevor Reza and the number 16 pick in tomorrow's draft, as well as next year's uh, first uh, first round protected, of course. Yep. But I hated this because uh, I actually like Robert Covenant. He did. One of my <laughs> favorite non-superstar players. Um, I actually hated the fact that we got rid of him after drafting him initially because I thought that his uh, his ability to shoot and his uh, his length is is what makes him special. Um, but we traded him again, unfortunately, yeah. and we bring back Trevor Reba, you know, who also has great length, shoots the corner three, blah blah blah. We know Trevor Reza. This is the third time we've done this. <laughs> And that's why it's so it's so unexciting because this is like this is the third time. I think it's more funny the fact that the Blazers actually get a younger, upgraded version of Trevor Ariza. That's the funniest part in this whole thing. It's like so crazy, and and it, and it, and it opens up some money, I think, for them because yeah. it's going to allow them now to use like their mid-level exception and all these other exceptions that the NBA has now. They can bring back Melo if they want. You know, they can bring in some other veterans. Melo's not going back there. Melo's not going back there. You said Melo, you don't think Melo's going back? No, he's not going back to Houston. No, no, not, no, no. I'm talking about Portland. I said Portland has more money. Oh, I got to make sure that you're not talking about your Rockets the whole time. I'm like, yeah, Melo's not going back to Houston. Portland has more more flexibility. Gotcha. No, Rockets have nothing. (laughs) dollars there. Uh, yeah, Melo Melo can definitely uh, resize. I think he will. I think he enjoyed playing with Dame, and you know, outside of a few injuries that happened, of course, uh, definitely during the Western Conference Finals. Um, I think they should definitely get the game back together. Now they have Robert Covington to come in as well, too. Huge. I mean, this is big for them. This is a great step in the right direction for them. No, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Any other only other. I guess news um, was the Dennis Schroeder trade, um, or at least that's what the plan is uh, to go to the Lakers. Obviously, them losing Rondo, you know, uh, in free agency, they trade for Schroeder, or they they plan on trading for Schroeder. I don't know if I've seen any details on it, but um, it's just so much speculation, you know. Um, obviously. <laughs> A lot of people opted out of their deals, which were pretty, you know. It's it was because the um, pretty clear the price cap, the salary cap went up, so they're trying to get exactly. Paid. So now that we've gotten holy crap, facts, Doc, 
The draft is tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, the, the draft is tomorrow for the first time in several years. The Rockets have a pick, uh, so I can actually watch it and get some type of excitement. But there is no excitement. Say, probably, there is no excitement. Like, only Zool. Die. <laughs> it'll probably die because most likely we'll trade that pick. So yeah. uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, my Knickerbockers actually have two first round draft picks. Well, let's see what happens with it. You never know. They're going to uh, give so, it away for about, a pack of Skittles. Let's talk about the media. Okay. So as, we <laughs> sat here, so as we sat here, you know, I, I try not to check my phone as much, you know, throughout the day. I just wait for the Bleacher Report notification, the text message from you or my brother or some other random person that knows that I'm a Rockets fan. Mm-hmm. And it's that. You know, James Harden traded for blah, 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 blah. So I've been waiting all day because, you know, I don't know. Yes. I don't know when it's going to happen. So uh, right before we started the show, I get a notification. This is Russell Westbrook, John Wall trade. Oh, my God. John Wall, he hasn't played basketball in like three years. Yeah. I'm hearing... Oh, the Rockets want Kyrie. <coughs> That's not happening. That's not happening. That's the whole point of the trade. That's not and happening. Then I hear Tillman Fertitta doesn't want to trade James Harden to the 76ers just because of Daryl Morey, which I don't blame him. But you got to be smart. Like now that Drew Holiday has been traded and the haul that they gave up for Drew. No, no disrespect to him, but they gave him the same deal that they sent Anthony Davis away for. Yeah. Except for the players. I mean, I will give. I hate this because I feel like he got a lot of slack. But David Griffin... If he's able to rebuild that team after what happened in Cleveland all those years ago, uh-huh. but if he's able to rebuild New Orleans the way it looks like he is, they might be on to something because he's he's really, really dominating on the trade front. Yes. Trade. Uh, he, projectively right now, he is looking towards creating something special out yeah. there in a Big Easy. Uh, which, means, which means... Which means... That in about a year or two, everyone's going to hate the Pelicans. Oh, without question. Look, you know, and I think I said that yesterday that, you know, I was going to just become a casual fan. I was going to follow LeBron. And then after LeBron retires, I guess I'll get ready to see what Zion and Giannis are doing. Uh, I guess I'll just see. I'll become a Pelicans fan, I guess. I'll just be like, hey, Zion's on the Pelicans. He went to Duke. I'm a Zion fan. Yay, I, 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 went, I went back to work when he said that, folks. You did. I know you did. I know you did. Uh, but, I mean, what happens if, you know, maybe David Griffin says, you know what, let's trade for James Harden. Why not? We got the money. I'll send I'll send them Brandon Ingram. He can go shoot as many shots as he wants there. He could. And five or six first-round picks because I got 15 of them, I think. <laughs> Doc wouldn't be against that, actually, folks. He actually would not be against yeah. that. I mean, because at this point, I feel like wherever James Harden goes, and I mean, I assume this is going to be similar to what happened with um, Carmelo. Mm-hmm. It's going to be similar to what, you know, what happened with a few people where it was like, hey, where do you want to be traded? And it's like, okay, I want to go to this place. They try to work on the deal. Obviously, James Harden saying, I want to go to Brooklyn. Only thing Brooklyn could send us back is some role players. Yeah. Some pick. Yeah. Uh, they were saying the one player that's going to have to be in that deal is um, Jared Allen. Right. Which is fine. I like Allen. I think he's a good rim protector. You know, he's a little slim, but, you know, he's a pretty good good player. I like Lavert. I like Dan Witte. Um, I like, yeah, you've like been, you been speaking about those two players the past two days. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's all they got to offer. If they're not giving anybody else up, that's all they have to offer. Yeah. So if you're going to if you're gonna sell, send those players, because I think some people was also saying DeAndre Jordan would have to be added for the salary. 
So they're going to send all those players. And since Drew got three first round picks, you got to at least send us five. Wow. You know, at least, you know what? Because I, I, I think I told somebody this earlier. Whoever gets James Harden has to send us first picks for the remainder of his salary. The remainder of his contract, excuse me. So uh, we got three years left. I need three years worth of first round picks. Like, we're going straight draft day with this. I need three first round picks for the next three years. Even though that's not going to equate to anything because they're going to be probably late round, you know, late round picks. I need at least three. Mm. But since Drew got three, now you got to make it five. Wait, so so what is this about the media again? So with the media, <laughs> I had to keep him back on pace because he would be going on about the rocket smokes. But this is this is the media. I'm, I am the media right now. This is uh, what we're getting. Uh, and this is what I was trying to tell my brother yesterday. It's like, shout out to oh, Shannon. yeah, shout out to him. I was like, we can't listen to everything that everybody says because no. they already said he's going to Philly. They said he's going to Brooklyn. I heard today. You know, Brooklyn's going to try to, you know, not send Kyrie. Then you come back and say, oh, Westbrook's going to the Knicks. No, now Westbrook's going to Washington. Yep. So it's like none of this could be happening. None of it could be happening. It's just speculation. Do you know how bad it was? James Harden was drinking water yesterday. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Oh the my man, gosh. The man was drinking water. And it he was trending. Cap, he put the cap on the table and he went, he, he started trending. That's supposed to be no cap. I don't know what that, that street link is. Literally, was. all it went was James Harden post cryptic Instagram post. Oh my like, god. Like, what the bleep was this? What this is the mean? same thing. Oh boy, I'm this is John Gotti coming in right now. What the bleep is this? We had the same BS crap we had a few years ago with the author fist me with uh LeBron James. This is exactly what Doc is talking about with this media, folks. Every little oh. thing that these and it's mainly the NBA. NFL's pretty so, bad, but it's really, really bad in the NBA. So no cap is supposed to be slang for an exaggeration or no lie or for real. But that would be opposite because technically there was a cap. There was a cap. <laughs> you know I mean? Which means that it would be lies. It would be exaggeration. And then we have these pissants sitting here trying to psychoanalyze this stupid oh, post. God. So what do you think James Harden was talking about with this? Oh, he's talking about the Rockets. Oh, he's talking about the Rockets. He said no he's, cap. He said, he said, hey, I want no cap. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god! Which he has not said one word. One Russell word. Russell Westbrook says that Stephen A. Smith was exaggerating the situation. That is a gross understatement, Mister Westbrook. I understand that, and I admire the fact that you would say that. But Stephen A. Smith is a notorious, no, 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 notorious exaggerator. It is ridiculous. Yeah. There's a reason why I spent all of season four ragging on him because of this stupid, <laughs> gross exaggeration that he does. And then we have these pissants out here listening to every freaking word that he says. Every word. Every single word and speaking to it like gospel, saying blasphemous. Most of don't even know what blasphemous means or mitigated means. <laughs> Mitigated and then have the balls to sit there and talk to Doc and Prof about basketball. The balls to talk Great. about basketball to us and say that mm -hmm. your reference is Stephen A. Smith. Are you kidding me? What are you blind? No, not even you're blind. You trying to play us? You trying to play us? <laughs> you trying to play us? <laughs> so yes, <laughs> you, said, you know it's like. Why can't people just say, I'm going to wait for Woj? Thank you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to wait for the Woj. Wait, wait for someone who is yeah. in the end. Instead of hearing people, we've already had 
Chris Bouchard reputation go down the toilet. Because he said, I have a reliable source that said that Kawhi Lin is going to the Lakers. Yeah, it's done, man. He's going to the Lakers. He signed with the Clippers. Oh, goodness. Well, you know, I didn't actually say he was going. You were a freaking liar. Wow. Oh, see. See, now it's okay. So now we're getting something else here. So Yahoo Sports. That's right. This, This writer here. Liz Rochier, I'm gonna say, from Yahoo Sports. You wanna you wanna know what the headline says, there, Johnny? Talk to me. The headline says James Harden and Russell Westbrook won out of Houston due to the owner's Trump support. Thank you very much for tuning in for tonight's show. <laughs> <laughs> Doc and Prof appreciates all the support that you give us. Make sure you give us a like, give us a comment. Let us know how you could we could do this better. Doc, I've never heard anything so stupid. I just got finished looking at a, a Bleacher Report article that is talking about Meek Mills recruiting. This is ridiculous. Right. And it's getting worse by the year. This is why I decided to become a catch. I can't have proper engaging conversations with people about the NBA anymore. Unless it's with you or it's someone that we know that we play ball with. Mm. Like I had the opportunity to listen to a live stream from another YouTuber, RB the breakthrough. Make sure you check him out. Cause he has some really, really good stuff. And he literally is talking about how the media is ruining basketball for us. Yeah, and I think, and honestly, I think, and, and it's something I it's know. it's showing how flaky people are with allegiances, right. with opinions about players, and all this other jazz. Mm-hmm. Kevin Durant goes to the Warriors. People call him a snake, right? LeBron James been assembling super teams his whole career, and no one says a thing. No, absolutely. So. so the next hold on so the next one says it's from Will Leitner this is from Fox Sports Radio Tillman Fertitta supporting Trump leading to quote unquote revolt amongst Rockets players so it sounds like they're trying to do something that people for the last 20 years mm-hmm. have wanted to do in New York, yep. which is run the odor out of town. If it hasn't happened in New York, folks, it's not happening in Houston. It's not going to happen. Oh okay. My it's not happening. These, <laughs> these asinine reporters, first of all, this is why Doc, Doc and I just listen to like, Reliable sources. So when we talk about things, we will reference these people because we know that they're in and they have. This is some crack shoot person sitting in his pajamas. Just writing stuff up. Well, how can we get clicks? Well, we need Spider-Man pictures. Come on. Well, I'm the right. This is exactly what this is. Let me just get some hot takes in here. All the NBA is is, all the NBA is right now, Doc, is nothing but hot takes. And it's right. it's ruining the league. It's been ruining the league since 2010. You know what I think it's time for us to do <clears throat> because this isn't this isn't your Donald Sterling moment. No, yeah, this isn't this isn't your you know cell phone gate in Philadelphia, um, which is so pretty. Know, funny. Like, I mean, this isn't you know this isn't like that. Nope. This is a guy's choice yep. of political party, which listen, win or lose, it doesn't, like I hate the fact that people people make judgments based off of what your political views are. Yeah, it's like everybody gets their news and I think that's where the media, that's where the internet, that's where Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, social media as a whole. Yep. Oh, well, they got us so wrapped up 
into other people's opinions and their beliefs Mm -hmm. that you don't realize that other people get their facts from different places than you. Yep. So it's like, what you know to be true and factual is an opinion to somebody else. Point. An example. Christopher Columbus discovered this land. Somebody's going to say, yes, that happened. Somebody else is going to say, no, that didn't happen. Yes, exactly. Our conversation about it, not getting anywhere. Nope. And then you'll walk away mad at each other because you didn't see each other's point. Yeah. That how everything is Politic, politics sports everything so it's like the sooner we just accept people's beliefs like as long as it's not hurting anybody like granted I hate racism I don't like racism anywhere near me we, we don't want racism in any of our spaces no. but if this man said hey I believe in Donald Trump as a president so be it that's yeah. your that's on you I'm not really feeling it. So if James Harden says, I don't want to sign an extension with this man, which he didn't, that so be it. But I'd rather them had came out and said that publicly, like, hey, I don't want to, I don't want to rock with this guy anymore because he supports Donald Trump. Instead of saying, Russ and Harden don't want to play together anymore. Yeah. Where's you your know, where, like, where where did you get the information from? It is like well, oh so, well, someone within within their camp. Yeah, we know how much that's reliable now. Right. It's like I don't want to play for this team anymore because everybody on the staff is pretty young. They're, this head coach is brand new. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know about him. Just give it to us straight. You know. Yes. Don't, don't say exactly. So when I'm we not, have places like Yahoo Sports, we're going to wrap this up. We have places like Yahoo Sports and these other crack pipe news media outlets, and especially those on ESPN on TV, just spewing stuff out there, and people go absolutely bonkers over it. Just remember that it's just an opinion. It is not what happened. And the last thing I'm going to say is it could be time for us to start watching soccer. I think I was actually, we was talking about that, actually. We <laughs> may actually take NBA off our list of stuff to talk about for the show, folks. So, like, it is that bad. Like, Doc heard me say that two seasons ago. And I'm like, I think I might be done with the NBA because of this very same reason. Yeah. And with that, we're going to take a quick break and come back with some more Debate Amongst Friends. And we're back. At the end of every show, we like to do what's called the two-minute drill, where we go over stories and headlines that we didn't get a chance to cover during the show. This past week, we had the cancellation of the Arizona State-Colorado game due to the COVID-19 outbreak, which also impacted head coach Herm Edwards. Prof? South Carolina head coach Will Muschamp got fired following their loss to Ole Miss. And Marshall University celebrates 7-0 following their big win against Middle Tennessee State University in remembrance of the 50-year anniversary of the tragic plane crash that took 75 members of the football program. Back to you, Doc. And that's all we have for today's show. Be sure to tune in next week for more news, more analysis, and the reads. Thank you for listening to Debate Amongst Friends. Give us a follow on our social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also listen to all of our Debate Amongst Friends podcasts here on Anchor, as well as Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and iTunes. And like we always say, goodbye, and to all, a good night.
L-E-S-G. Peace, Dios.